Hello! Welcome back to Are We Alone? A Scientific Perspective on Aliens. When we talked about the Fermi Paradox, I said despite the overwhelming number of planets in our galaxy, we have not seen any signs of intelligent life. But how do we know? Which brings us to SETI. The term SETI is an acronym for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, but it can also be used just to refer to the SETI Institute, which is a nonprofit research organization. The general search for other intelligent life actually started right here in our own solar system. In the early 19th century, there was a lot of interest in particular in civilizations on Mars. When Mars and Earth passed unusually close to one another in 1924, many used it as an opportunity to listen for radio signals from these possible Martians. For example, the US Naval Observatory actually put a radio receiver up on a dirigible to listen for these communications and had a cryptographer on standby in case they were needed to translate. Indeed, radio signals have long been and continue to be the primary medium for SETI searches, but we'll get into that in a different video. By now we know there are no radio-emitting intelligent civilizations lurking within our own solar system, although the existence of microbes is still TBD. So the hunt for aliens began to turn outward in the mid-20th century. The first modern SETI effort was in 1960, named Project Ozma, yes, named after the character from Wizard of Oz, and it was conducted by Frank Drake, the same Drake of the Drake Equation. Project Ozma used a radio telescope at Green Bank in West Virginia to listen to Tau Ceti and Epsilon Eridani, two relatively nearby stars that are similar to the Sun. Another pioneering early SETI project was Ohio State's Big Ear. This was a large radio telescope originally designed for the detection of natural radio sources in the cosmos. The telescope began doing that in 1963, but by 1973 it had transitioned to listening for artificial radio sources. That began what would become the longest ever running SETI project, which continued for 22 years to 1995. Most notably, in 1977, the Big Ear detected the so-called WOW signal, which astronomers are still puzzling over today. NASA got in on the SETI game as well in 1971, funding a design study for an instrument that could be used to detect extraterrestrial life. The proposed design, Project Cyclops, was never built. It would have been really expensive. But that report served as the basis for a lot of future SETI work. NASA actually has a kind of on-again, off-again relationship with SETI, as the idea was, and is, often criticized as being wasteful and not serious science. Many SETI endeavors have been and continue to be privately funded. But NASA's small SETI program was actually the first project of the SETI Institute, which was established in 1984 by Thomas Pearson and Dr. Jill Tarter, who wanted to create a kind of institutional home for scientists and engineers that were interested in studying life in the universe. Dr. Tarter is still involved with the SETI Institute today, now as a trustee, and she was actually the real-life inspiration for the main character of the movie, Contact. I actually had the chance to meet Dr. Tartar on an episode of The Astro Show, which was really cool. She's a very inspirational scientist, and you can check out that show if you're interested. So where does SETI stand nowadays? Well, it's actually a more active area than ever for research. The SETI Institute now is home to over 100 scientists who are dedicated to studying the universe and the prevalence of life. There are several prominent SETI searches that are still ongoing, so who knows? Maybe someday soon we'll get that exciting signal. There's the Allen Telescope Array, which began operations in 2007, and it was the first telescope to really be designed from the ground up to be used for SETI. And the SETI Institute has access to the ATA for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, to do their SETI research. The array was funded primarily by Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, and is now managed by SRI International after UC Berkeley exited the project in 2012. Serendip is a program that started back in the 70s, and it's a piggyback program. So while other astronomers are using a radio telescope for their science, Serendip can take deep space radio data for SETI analysis. Unfortunately, Serendip was primarily operating at the Arecibo telescope, which did collapse in 2020. In order to deal with the large volumes of data being created by Serendip, they used a program called SETI at Home, which basically used volunteers' home computers to run analysis in the background. This program ran for 20 years, however, it entered an indefinite hiatus back in 2020 due to decreased funding and the need to focus on back-end data analysis. Serendip is, to my knowledge, still installed at the Green Bank Radio Telescope, so maybe new data will someday start to flow to SETI at Home volunteers again. And Serendip is a UC Berkeley project via the Berkeley SETI Research Center. 
And there's Breakthrough Listen, which is a 10-year program started back in 2015 to detect extraterrestrial radio signals. The initiative has thousands of dedicated hours on two major radio telescopes, the Green Bay Observatory in West Virginia and the Parks Observatory in Australia. The Meerkat Radio Telescope Array and the Automated Planet Finder Telescope to search for laser signals have also become primary facilities for Breakthrough Listen. Breakthrough Listen from its many millions of signals has detected one possible candidate, although it has been shown to probably be radio interference from Earth. This is one of the most comprehensive searches for alien communication signals to date. It's not a cheap project, but the bill is being picked up by Russian billionaire Yuri Milner. Detecting interstellar communication signals is one of the six core science objectives of China's new huge radio telescope, FAST. FAST had its first light back in 2016 and became fully operational in 2020, shortly thereafter releasing the results of their validation of their SETI instrumentation techniques and data processing pipeline. And just this year, FAST had its first kind of weird but maybe alien signal that turned out to be, yeah, just radio interference from Earth. FAST is funded by the National Development and Reform Commission of the National Astronomical Observatories of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So. 62 years after Frank Drake first listened for aliens in Project Ozma, we've come a long way in our search for extraterrestrial intelligences. Obviously, so far, the results have been null. You definitely would have heard if we had detected an alien signal. The most promising candidate is that WOW signal from 1977, which we'll talk more about next time. And in a future video, we'll get into the details of how and where we actually look for these signals. What would be considered a sign of intelligent life? See you then! Bye!